Uh, so, uh, Martha Vassoni Lentz, she is an Associate Teaching Professor of Spanish in the Department of World Languages and Cultures. Uh, she's originally from Argentina and moved to Ames 24 years ago, and she's been teaching her native language at Iowa State for the last 10 years, and her talk is on the Spanish for Heritage Speakers class. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Buenos dias. Yeah. <coughs> Could you please move to the other one? Okay, I'm a Latino Americana, born and raised in Argentina, the land of the tango, the dulce de leche, the mate, and the gaucho. So, um, the Spanish program at Iowa State is very, very proud to uh, offer for the first time our Spanish for Heritage Speakers um, class. Um, this, um, this class uh, has been specifically designed for students who grew up speaking Spanish at home, but had not received uh, any academic uh, training in the language. So the objectives um, are to introduce more formal academic vocabulary, to uh, increase their knowledge of the grammatical structures, um, also to fortify their reading and writing skills, and to provide uh, tools um, to think critically uh, in Spanish, kind of transfer what they know in English to do it in Spanish. And um, so why is this important to us? Well, could you please move to the next one? Well, uh, this class is important um, to us because as Chomsky said, a language is just not words, it's history, is a culture, is what brings a community together. If, and for our Hispanic students at Iowa State, Spanish, our language, is what brings us together. And so um, for this, I have my wonderful uh, three students. I have more students in the class, more than three. Uh, I only brought <coughs> three today. Uh, and they are going to um, talk about their experience growing up bilingual, growing up as a heritage speaker of Spanish, and also uh, what this class means to them. So I'm going to introduce them. Um, they are Oscar Grijalva <laughs> Mancillas, Clever Miranda, and Mark Ruelas. And um, please go ahead. <coughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Oscar Grijalva. I am a sophomore from Sioux City, Iowa, majoring in hospitality management and minoring in Spanish. Uh, so a little bit about me. I grew up uh, speaking Spanish. Uh, both my parents are from, uh, so my mom's from Mexico and my dad's from Guatemala. Uh, so growing up, up until about the age of four, I would say, uh, it was all just Spanish at home. Um, that was, you know, my first language. That's all I knew. Uh, when I entered Head Start, so I was about four or five, is when I started learning, you know, English. Um, and ever since then, I think, throughout my education up until high school, it's when, you know, I spoke, you know, both Spanish and English. Uh, but I want to say that when I entered high school, my freshman year, that's when I transitioned into speaking more English with my parents. Uh, my mom understood English pretty well. She talks it very well. Um, so that was, you know, it was kind of natural with me and my mom uh, speaking English. Even now, our conversations are still mostly taken in English. So um, that's a little bit why I, why I wanted to participate in this class. But with my dad, it's um, I talk to him in English, and he responds to me in Spanish. So I'm trying to work on that, on 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 speaking better Spanish with them. Uh, so this class, when when I met with the Spanish advisor Flor. Uh, she, you know, asked me if I was interested in this class, and I didn't know, you know, what it was about. Uh, but when she gave me a little insight about it, um, it, it was pretty interesting because I, you know, I never got the education growing up um, in Spanish. So far, this class has been, you know, it's been super, super helpful with um, with different aspects of the language. So far, we've, you know, we've learned where to accent things, what types of words need accents. 
Um, and for me, you know, uh, being a hospitality student, you know, I think Spanish is, you know, super beneficial. So knowing how to, how to, how to properly write and how to properly, you know, um, structure a paragraph, cause that's what, we, what we've been uh, going through. All that helps for my future, and I think that's the importance of this class. And then also we get the different aspects in the class. I know there's people from, you know, El Salvador. Um, there's just people, you know, from everywhere. So we have little, you know, um, we'll talk in class, and one person says, you know, this phrase differently, or this person says this phrase differently. Uh, so just kind of getting the different, you know, aspects. It's super interesting, super cool. And Professora Lenz, she knows what we need, what we need work on. Um, and it's just super helpful, you know, she's there with us, she's there to support us. And so this class is super, you know, super, super beneficial. I suggest that if any of you grew up speaking Spanish or, you know, are interested in this class in any way, I suggest, you know, in the future, um, consider taking it. Okay, well, can you guys hear me? Um, good morning, guys. Uh, my name is Clever Ronaldo Miranda Campo Verde. I have to say Campo Verde because that's my mom's last name. And she told me if I don't say her last name, I don't have a mother. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, uh, I am a junior studying psychology, minoring in Spanish. Um, I grew up like he did around till four or five, just knowing Spanish at home. Um, then I went to, I was off to preschool and, and kindergarten and uh, started learning English. Uh, it was quite hard because I grew up knowing that um, E in English is the letter E, and then E in Spanish is I. So um, it was quite hard in some words. Uh, I was put into ESL for a couple of years, um, but I... Uh, for when I turned six um, and then eight, I was separated from my parents, and they were banned to come back to the U.S. for 10 years. So I had the opportunity to go uh, at least twice a year for 10 years uh, to Ecuador and uh, basically strengthen my Spanish in a way. Um, and I was known as the gringo <laughs> in Ecuador. Um, and uh, both of my parents are Ecuadorian, uh, so that I don't really see much Ecuadorians in Iowa State. Um, but I am actually the first one in my family to go to college. Um, like Lupe said earlier, um, my family was very against for me to go to college. Um, they didn't really know the meaning of it. Uh, my family stopped going to school in sixth grade um, because of money situation back in Ecuador. So um, they were happy enough just for me to graduate from high school, but then come to college, and that was just a completely different thing. But um, there was long talks, late night talks, about me explaining them uh, everything, and so they now understand, and they're happy. Um, but uh, being in this class, um, it's kind of just like being at home. I, um, I have now new friends. Uh, it's like a little community of people from all over of Latin and South America. And um, yeah, I'm very happy. Um, we get to learn, not only myself, but I actually teach my family um, what we learn in class. And so they're learning too, um, of especially the preterito and imperfectos and <laughs> setting a stat and all that. Um, and it is true, some of us do use different phrases, different words, as uh, the, the professora said. Um, she was supposed to cook something with some of her friends, and they were looking for um, elote. And um, she couldn't find elote. And for us, even though we live, in, oh, we're from South America, she's way south, and I'm way up top um, in, in South America, we use the same. Uh, name as Choclo. So it's a little different. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this class. I'm very really, um, thankful for um, for this class to be uh, shown for the first time, where the little rats <laughs> being the experiment. But I like it so much. And <laughs> um, 
I know you told me to talk about what am I like organizations and stuff. Um, so I, me and Oscar are both and Lupe. Uh, well, she was, but we are um, in uh, this organization called LSI, uh, Latinx Student Initiatives. Um, basically, with this uh, this organization, we try to get as most as the Latinx community together um, as a family and support each other. Uh, we'll do like little events around, um, actually here in a couple of weeks, we'll have an event called The Retreat. Um, we'll go on a Friday and come back Saturday. But um, basically there, you get to meet new people, make new friends, um, interact with each other, learn, um, what it is like for every person when they come in. As of myself, I came as a transfer student from DMAC. I was born in Des Moines. So I went to DMAC first, and then I transferred off to Iowa State. And so my first uh, two months that I came to Iowa State, and I've, I've talked to several people here, but uh, and they kind of have the similarities. Uh, they uh, go into this depression and anxiety um, State, so they kind of um, they kind of feel like they don't belong here, and I felt the same way, and I felt like I was about to drop out, and I was like, I can't do this, and uh, I'm thankful for the people who I met at LSI, they actually were supportive, and they're like, you can do this, you, you just keep going, it's just a little phase you'll have, um, so yeah, I'm thankful for that, and. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. So if you guys want to know about LSI, you can just talk to one of us um, or Lupe. We'll tell you a little bit more about it if you guys are interested. So, thanks. Thanks, Clever. Um, so I'll be the third guinea pig in the class, <laughs> uh, or rat, like you said. Uh, my name is Mark Rellis. Good morning. I'm a second year PhD student here at Iowa State in sociology. My area of emphasis is criminology. I was born in Los Angeles. Uh, both my parents were born and raised in Mexico. More specifically, my dad's from Ocotlan, Jalisco. My mom's from Oaxaca. Um, I was raised in the metro Los Angeles area, and about three years ago, I moved to Iowa. So I'm still getting used to Iowa from <laughs> Southern California. <laughs> like my colleagues, Clever and Oscar, uh, growing up, we mainly spoke Spanish at home with our parents. But once we started school, we transitioned, uh, especially once we got into school events, school activities, we transitioned. Uh, speaking English with my brothers and sisters, and then eventually that transitioned into speaking English only with uh, our parents. However, I did study Spanish in high school for four years. Uh, from my perspective, uh, the importance of a course like Spanish 305X, or Spanish for heritage speakers of Spanish, is twofold. Uh, the first reason uh, for the importance of this course uh, is purchasing power. There are roughly 60 million Hispanics in the U.S., or about 18% of the total U.S. population. We are the youngest ethnic group in the United States. We are the largest minority consumer group. In 2018, Hispanics as a collective group had a purchasing power of $1.6 trillion with a T. Clearly, a lot of the estimated 60 million Hispanics in the U.S. Uh, speak English. However, some do not. As a nation, we're competing globally for customers. We're leaving money on the table as a nation if we ignore the customer base uh, due to the inability to speak Spanish. Uh, the young students in the class at 305X will soon be leading organizations, whether profit-seeking or not-for-profit organizations. And soon after leading organizations, you guys are going to be tasked with uh, dealing with people that are Spanish-speaking. So get used to it. <laughs> um, the second reason is a little more pragmatic. Um, I served in law enforcement in Los Angeles for 25 years prior to moving to Iowa. We hired a lot, I mean a lot, of heritage speakers of Spanish for obvious reasons, because it's California, to work in our police departments. Um, very few officers, unfortunately, spoke Spanish at the college level. Uh, being able to, uh, what I mean, being fluent in Spanish, read, write, speak, and especially translate for court purposes. The majority of our heritage speakers in law enforcement speak a fundamentally flawed version of Spanish that hardly rises above the middle school level. This is entirely unacceptable, and in the legal field and in the law, law enforcement profession, it's almost fatal sometimes. What I mean by it is, quite frankly, the level of Spanish being used by professionals is kind of embarrassing. There have been a lot of uh, multitude, multitude of legal cases, both civil and criminal, 
that have been lost or overturned due to the incorrect translation of Spanish. Uh, the law enforcement profession is under intense scrutiny uh, more and more each day for a number of reasons. And this is just another area in which the criminal justice system is flawed when dealing with uh, members of the Hispanic community. Um, and finally, uh, a course like 305X is essential for providing our heritage speakers uh, the tools to operate in a global economy and also the tools to deal with the law enforcement profession. I know we're coming up on a lunch break, so I try to be as brief as possible. <laughs> and finally, I just want to uh, reiterate those that are, have, a, have a handle on Spanish, please take 305X. It's an excellent course, and that's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Come take it. <laughs>